Have you ever felt overwhelmed creating an app with Glide? Look no further than today's video where we talk to Manan, who is a Glide expert in how to create your next business tool. You're gonna to be learning three things in this video. Number one, how you can build the back end or the storage of the app. Number two, how you can create the front end or the screens for your application. And three, creating the logic of the application. You're gonna be learning all that from Manan, who is from Modern Processes. And if you wanna know more about how to create your own app idea, there's a guide down below. And so let's get started. Hey everybody, we're back. And this is session two of BuildCon 2023. In this session, we have a special guest here with us. This is really, really special. We have an expert among us. I just saw that he got a certificate from Glide and all those things. Uh, Manan, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here. Firstly, thank you so much for having me, Doc. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to uh, have worked with you before and now doing some things like this with you. So thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm quite excited because we're going to be playing around with some Glide AI and uh, building some really powerful things in less than probably half an hour, hopefully. Let's see. It's, let's do it. Let's do it. So if every uh, if if you're just joining us for this session, uh, just let us know uh, that you're watching live. Uh, but remember, we're in this session right now with Manan. Glide, turn your app ideas into reality with no code magic. So we're going to be breaking this down, looking at all of these different things that uh, Manan's going to show us. And remember, if you're just watching this or you're watching this on replay, we're going to be using the BuildCon uh, notes right here in Notion, you can get this. And we're going to be building out a micro SaaS and showing how to do this with no code and specifically with Glide. So we'll have Manan take it away. I'll be answering questions in the chat, all of those things. So remember, if you have questions, what Glide is, how he's doing it, let us know all those things in the chat right now. So Manan, whenever you're ready, we'll, uh, we'll put your screen up. And then you'll be able to start screen sharing and go from there, man. Okay. For sure. Let's go. So, uh, as you said, we are actually going to be converting one of my app ideas uh, into a micro SaaS today. Uh, and this one is something that I think everybody faces. I have just named this networking ninja, but I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, the details uh, when once I sh uh, share. Okay. Let's go. And while this happens, Doc, I would love to hear your feedback. And if somebody's okay. commenting, let me know. Okay, sounds good. Also, too, because I'm going to remove my screen share real quick. If you uh, queue up your screen in a second, and then I'll bring yours on online right here. I'll add yours to stage right now, and okay. you are good to go. We can see your screen. Fantastic. Great. So uh, today we are going to talk about a very simple use case, but something that everybody faces. Uh, networking Ninja is actually an idea that was born out of my own need. Uh, but let's talk about it a little bit more in detail. All of us, while we are uh, doing either we are working at a business, at a startup, uh, uh, looking for jobs, or uh, you are you are a student. But while you're doing any of those things, you're always looking to make new connections. You're always looking to network. And whenever you're networking, what happens is you usually this is standard, okay? When somebody goes to an event or you meet somebody on the road at an event, in person, online, whatever, you end up exchanging, let's not talk online, but uh, this is very, very much to do with on field. You end up exchanging business cards with each other. And what happens when you just collect a business card, come home and you don't even remember whose business card that is, what was your conversation about, what were the next steps, etc. Now, Imagine, as soon as you select, collect somebody's business card, uh, and imagine what if we build something such that they give you the business card and immediately you have uh, dropped in your uh, your mental thoughts on paper. Uh, also send them uh, uh, an introduction, uh, introductory message on either their WhatsApp or their email. And basically uh, it maintains, it becomes your own CRM as well eventually so that you always remember who was this person where did you meet them uh, what was the conversation about where did you meet them when did you meet them etc now this was more or less the idea 
because there was one fine day where I went to a conference uh, and uh, I met probably 50 odd people, all really interesting folks. And I had a bunch of business cards at home uh, and I had no idea who was who. It was impossible for me. So that's that got me thinking that what if I had this was my user journey. So before I dive into the user journey, this is my first pro advice. Whenever you have an idea that you, are, you want to work on, it's best to chart out the idea either on paper or on uh, something like whimsical in a flowchart format. Because flowcharts, when you're building apps and when you're building any kind of products or a SaaS product as well, it's flowcharts really help you put your ideas uh, in, in a logical format, in an algorithmic format. So I always prefer flowcharts. I usually do it on paper because I love doing it with pen and paper uh, in an old school format. But then I make it fair by putting it uh, on uh, on a flowchart making tool. Here I'm using Whimsical to do so. So I just put together my thoughts on this particular flowchart. Uh, Doc, I'm hoping all good so far. You're awesome. You're awesome. Uh, everything's Perfect. going good. People are saying that that's a great idea, writing down different ideas. Uh, we use market plan. What, what did you use to br break down yours? What was the, what was the name of it? Uh, whimsical. Nice. Um, could uh, later on, I'm going to need the link to it because I'm going to put that in the chat Absolutely. for everyone to try it out. This is great. For great sure. stuff, man. Everyone's loving it. Keep it going. Okay, let's go. So now I broke down my idea in, in the same way on flowcharts, And this was, this was me. So me being the user, I meet somebody physically at an event or a conference. Uh, the next natural progression is I do rapper building with them. So doc, for example, I meet you, I spend some time with you and we talk about doc, what do you do? Uh, how is, uh, how is the company going? What are you doing with no code nowadays, etc., etc. And eventually I realize, uh, for now I've kept it simple, but for me, Whenever I'm going to a conference, I'm trying to look at two, two kinds of personas. Either you are somebody who I can uh, work with uh, as a, like you, you can become a client for me or you are somebody who I would want to hire. Okay. So you are one of two personas. So while I'm prospecting you, I'm trying to judge if you are a prospect or you are a, you are a potential hire. So I'm trying to put you in one of these buckets. Uh, also, as soon as the wrapper building is done, what is the next way to uh, what what would happen what would you try to do the next the next thing is exchanging contact information now even though everything has the world has come uh, to a paperless uh, place and stuff like that people still love business cards they still love printed business cards uh, i have seen a few people using nfc tags and uh, qr codes and stuff but still nothing beats a printed business card. And this is something I've seen because I, I was collecting 50 odd business cards. Now, after I've built wrapper with you, doc, you would hand me over your business card. I will collect your business card and I'll put it in my wallet and job done. I don't even know what happened because when I go home, I won't remember uh, what the conversation was because I met 50 odd people today. But instead, what if I take your business card I take a picture of your business card and immediately because your business card already has your name, your number, your email, your company, your designation. I basically use some AI and uh, an OCR to extract all this data and store it somewhere. So automatically I've taken a picture of your business card, stored all the information for, for me to view uh, in, in a database format. First of uh, all, okay. that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And I want to just bring back a few things. So Manon's saying some awesome things right here, but we want to make sure for ones that are just getting started and to think about this is Manon's building this because this is a pain point for him. This is a pain point right. that he's having. And also too, when you're meeting so many people, you can misplace business cards. You can, it can be confusing. You forget who you're talking to. So he's writing all of those things down, a workflow of all the most important things that he wants the app to capture. So he, just like he mentioned, your first step, write down your idea on a piece of paper, why this is important. And then logically, what is the app going to do when you're going through this workflow? 
So this is this is a great example. Um, for also for you were using terms like OCR uh, when people are having trouble or just getting started with it. Um, what does that stand for again? Optical. Oh, sure. What is it? No, that's a, that's yeah. a great question, Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. OCR is probably an optical something reader. Even I don't know yeah. the, the full form. Yeah. But basically, it's it's something that's been built, which basically reads pictures. So once you upload a picture, and inside a picture there is text, and OCR automatically understands what the text is and puts it in a textual format. So basically, converting an image into text. That's what an OCR does. I love it. Image and one of the text. OCRs, yeah, one of the OCRs that we have is Google Vision. So Google has its own product, which is Google Vision. We'll see how we use Google Vision in our app. For now, it's don't worry about it. We'll we'll find out how to use it because Glide makes it a lot more easier than that. All right, sounds good. So if I'm understanding this correctly. Um, we're going to now that we have the plan. We're going yep. to now use Glide to be able to do that action of what you're planning to do. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We'll, we'll just add one more step to this. Uh, we'll add something like a uh, we'll capture. So as soon as I'm I'm done capturing your information, your business card. The second step that I'll do is uh, I'll capture a voice recording of our meeting. That's all. I'll just say it was great meeting, Doc. Um, uh, the next steps are for me to share some information with Doc because he's a prospect. So I'll try to put you in, in one of the buckets with my speech. And lastly, I'll just say, I want to meet Doc tomorrow at 5 p.m. That's it. And as soon as I say these things, not I'm not typing it in. I'm simply recording my voice because while I'm at, at an event, it's so much more simpler for me to speak rather than type. Right. So as soon as I type this, I, I speak this, it basically uses some AI and automatically creates actionable to-do list for me and sends it to Doc as well. That's that's the job. Like last thing, the output is going to be a personalized email that I'm going to send to Doc with the body, which includes the next steps and maybe capture the meeting location, et cetera. So that's what my app does. It I meet somebody, I uh, scan their business card, uh, I capture a voice note and it sends a message to me and Doc both. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And what I like about this is at the end, you did the wrap up. We're meeting someone. This is what's going to be happening. Then, so those steps, it's really important to have someone document this. Now, let me ask you something because to you, again, you're an expert. You're thinking about this logically. What if it's someone for the first time? They're not used to thinking about capturing or thinking about these things logically. Maybe they might feel confused right now. What would be a um, what would be the first steps? Would you think having an application that does less things, or what would your thought process be if someone feels overwhelmed as they're doing this? Oh, I would always focus focus on like the mantra: less is more. Really works in the app building world, in my opinion, with this experience. Because yeah, when you are beginning, you don't even know what feature is going to work. So always focus on something very specific, uh, something which is a pain point and one pain point which you want to solve. And eventually, you can always build on top of that. Excellent, excellent. Which we're, it, which is perfect of what we were talking about planning in the session before. So we're building upon this. Now we understand we're having a breakdown. Manon broke down using his uh, program the progression of how he's going to be building in the app. Now we're going to be using Glide to do this with the power of AI. And uh, let's get going. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. Also, no pressure. I'm going to record the time, how long it takes you to do this. So don't worry. <laughs> you just keep doing what you're doing. But uh, yeah, sure. let, let's see how fast we can do this, okay? That's a fresh new challenge for me. But let's see. Let's try to make a very low fidelity version. Low fidelity being a simple version, which basically works does the job sounds great let's, let's do go. it great so i will go and glide and i will just and i have uh, i'm not i have not built anything for you beforehand i'm going to do everything live so love it build con networking ninja uh, i'm going to be making it for the phone so simply go here what i did was i created a new app on glide 
and named it and selected mobile and pressed continue. And for the sake of this app, Glide gives us access to multiple different backend databases, basically where your data resides. In this case, I have no data that I have out, uh, externally. So I'm simply going to use something that is native to Glide, which is Glide tables. And I click on create app. As soon as this is done, Glide will automatically put together a dashboard for me where there will be some various different screens over here. Um, let's wait while it does that. Uh, as, as it's doing that, can I ask you a question? Sure. So when we're doing this, um, would you always recommend using Glide tables? I saw that you could use Airtable. Why did you decide to use Glide tables? Great question. Uh, it's if your data is going to be generated while using the app, uh, it's always recommended to use Glide tables because it's native to Glide. It's it's the one thing that does not need any external integration uh, to be built together. It needs one tool. But as soon as you have some data which is residing somewhere else, like you are already using an Airtable base for uh, logging some of your customer data and you want to use that on your app, or you're using a Google sheet to extract data from somewhere else and you want to use that in your app. Basically, you have an external database where data is already living. Then using that database makes sense. But if you are creating an app which is going to generate its own data, then I would always recommend using Glide tables because it's native to Glide. Does that make sense? That makes sense. All right. Keep it going. That's awesome. Perfect. Makes sense. Now, we are on Glide. On Glide, Glide is actually broken down into three very specific parts. Every app always has something called as a backend, something called as a front end, and something which glues everything together, which is the integration or actions. Now, Glide has made it naturally like that. It's made it's made three different sections, which you see over here. This is the backend. Backend, it's a big word, but backend is basically just the data, the, the place where random data lives. It lives in the format of a spreadsheet. And most of us are accustomed to Google Sheets and Excel. It's basically Excel. Okay. The front end is the screens, is the things that the user sees. It's purely the place where you will design how things should look. And finally, the actions. The actions are basically the glue tools, the place where uh, you make a workflow, you make some logic flow where if something happens, do that, something on those lines. But basically, this is a little more advanced. We'll come to that. But that's the simple breakdown. Okay. I love it. Now, so they had the back end where you store the data, front end, which right. is the screen, what the user sees. And then I like how you said glue or the actions of what people are going to be doing. Okay, we got it. Let's go. Oh, wait, real quick, if you like this video, this is all part of our 2023 BuildCon conference. If you wanna see more topics like this and learn how to build with other platforms, make sure you look at the link down below to get all of that bundle for you. Perfect. Now what I will do is I will just quickly create a data structure. Now, while Glide automatically creates certain things for me, I don't really need them. So what I will do is I'll just go here and delete these. And now, this might seem just, very basic. Are you doing yeah. a right-click deleting? Or are you double-clicking? What are you doing, doing to right delete click. it? I'm clicking on, on this with a right-click, and it gives me the options to do, do the various things. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, a users table is basically uh, telling Glide who are going to be the users of my app. For now, this is it's just going to be me. So I'm going to keep just my data over here. This app is being built only for me for now. Eventually, we can make it into a product and make it into a SaaS. But for the sake of this conversation, we'll keep it to just, just a personal app, just for me. I'll add another table, which is going to be of, let's name it, uh, people I meet. So I clicked on the plus button and just added a new table. Let's wait for it to do the job. Great. And once this new table is added, I'm simply going to double click over here to rename it. Uh, yeah. And people I meet. That's how I'm going to name it. And the name of the column is going to be phone number. 
and here I can select the type of the column as well. So for me, phone number is is basically something where I'm going to store phone numbers. So I will go in basic and I'll just select phone numbers. It's it's just the column type. So that Glide knows this is where I'm going to save phone numbers. Similarly, I'll add a new column for email. Column type here is going to be email. While we are doing that, I'll show you something interesting which you guys must have seen already. Let's see the new... Uh, the new yeah, the next column is going to be company. And when you see the type, Glide has already categorized four different types of columns internally. For now, we are just using basic because it's just basic data. But the others are really interesting. Computed columns means something that works on basic data and gives you more information. It's more like calculations, templates, if else, logic, etc. AI is, as the word suggests, is something to do with artificial intelligence and integrations is something to do with external apps which you can link with glide okay for now Love we'll it. add another column for the company which is a basic text column and we add finally designation which is also going to be a text column fantastic while this is done this is where this information is going to be stored but before i store any of this information I need to capture a picture of the business card. So I'll add another column which says business card. And this column is actually going to be an image column. So here Glide gives a great option for me to simply search the column I want to look at, look for. And I'm here, I'm going to just search for image. Perfect. I got a column for the business card. I searched for the image and I'm going to save it. That's about it for the backend for now. As soon as we start building, we'll get more, more things that we need to do. But my first step, if I go back on my flowchart, I can always see. My first, first step is receiving a printed business card. So taking a picture of a printed business card. So my first step that I will always need for my users is going to be uploading a business card. Now over here, what I will do is I'll go back to the layout of Glide uh, just to make things a little more interesting. I'll make a welcome screen. Uh, so first I have the first screen that I'm working on. On the top left, I have the multiple, I have multiple different screens that are available. I can add new screens. I can uh, edit the existing ones. I can hide the existing ones, etc. For now, I just need one screen. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll build this screen for now. When I click on the screen, on the right side, I get the settings of the screen. Over here in the settings, I'll simply go and select the source to the, the new uh, sheet that we have, which says people I meet. And I can rename the, the uh, label from things to people I meet. I can do a lot more customizations with the icons and stuff, but for now uh, we'll, we'll leave it to just functional stuff. Over here, Glide has automatically now, added. Yeah. Can I pause just for a second? For sure. Um, if, if um, there is a, a couple different comments and we'll come back to a second. So if I'm understanding correctly, you're going to be building out the back end very e uh, you're going to build the back end first. You're only going to be focused on two different ways to collect data. The users, yes. because you need to track the users, and then also the business card of what it's going to be seen from when you take the picture. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Okay. And then on the front end, what is your ideas? How many screens do you need to be building? What are you thinking as you're building out the layout when we're, you're switching over to the front end? Perfect. That's a great question. For now, because my app is like a simple four step logic, for me, the front end is going to be one screen where all I mm. need to do is put together capture business card. So, step one for me is going to be capture the card. Step two is going to be capture the voice. Step three is going to be uh, simply store this information properly if everything is correct and then just send messages. So, all I need on my front screen. 
on 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 the layout that I have is going to be upload a picture, upload the voice, and as soon as both these things are done, it will automatically create uh, the output. I'll verify the output if it makes sense, and hit submit. Yeah. Okay. So because because my app is so simple, I'm going to keep it uh, fairly straightforward uh, with just one screen for now. Okay. Okay. And yeah. one last thing. If we're thinking about someone that's just getting started this from from scratch, what what's the how are they going to think about the app in their hand and the buttons? How do you think about where the buttons are going to be? Just visually, if you could talk about that a little bit. That's a great question, Doc. And here I'm going to share my opinion because that's how I do it. Whenever I'm building my first MVP, my first version, I don't I don't care about the buttons. I don't care about where the button comes in. All I care about for now is to make the functionality work. Okay, to make the feature work. As soon as I can make the feature work, it's always easy for me to change the location of certain items from here to there. So for now, for me, it's going to be very straightforward just to capture the information that I want and push it further. That's it. Love it. Love it. Love, yeah. it. Love it. Thanks, man. Because okay. it's, it's extremely important to be flexible and to iterate fast. Yeah. Makes sense? Yep. Makes sense. Thank you so much. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do over here is in the people I meet section, uh, I have all these six columns. I'll add just one more column, which is going to be meeting notes, which is what I'm going to capture on my voice. So I'll just add meeting notes here. And that's about it. For now, this is all I'm going to add over here. This is where as soon as my prospect data has been entered, this is where the data is going to stay. So my end goal is going to be to populate this data automatically somehow. So in order to do, do that, I need to do two things, as I mentioned over here. And this is what I keep doing. Once I've made a flowchart, I'll keep on bouncing between the flowchart and the app build to understand, to think about how, uh, how should I go about it. So again, when I come back to the flowchart, I can simply see, OK, all I need to do is capture business card details and capture voice. So my home screen should simply have two fields for me to enter. One, to upload a picture. Second, to upload voice. So that's what I'm going to build now. Now on my home screen, what I need to do is I, I don't really want to enter the data here right now. I want to simply store that information uh, in, in a temporary column. And then if everything works well, upload it. So for that, I'll just add two new temporary columns. So let's name it temporary business card. This is also going to be an image. Uh, this, this column will make it user specific. Uh, in fact, let's, let's leave it there. It's not needed for this use case because we have, we have just one user. So I'll have a place for saving the temporary business card. And I'll have another space for saving the temporary voice recording. Now, why do we need that? Could you explain that a little bit more? I'll, I'll do that. Uh, voice recording is actually going to be a link. So we'll do that. Perfect. Yeah. Why I'm doing this is because every time I add a new prospect, I want to be, uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to store that information for some time. And only then add it to my uh, add it to my actual database. So this information is just temporary. This is this is going to change every time a new meet a new person. But as soon as I store it, it becomes permanent. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm going to have more yeah. questions on that. Some we're going to go through this, but this is a great overview. Keep it going. This okay. is good. Um, right. Okay. So now, One thing. Sorry, Manan. One last thing. Is it possible we, we used to do this when we when we were working together? Um, have you yeah. found this for your clients if they're building this? Do you ever provide a screenshot of the database structure that they should just have, or like a snapshot of like if they were going to build this from scratch? Here's the columns. Here's the column types and the reason why. Anything like that? Yeah. So usually, what I would do is uh, have like a preset database that uh, I've created somewhere and share those with them. Like, this is how you should structure it. So it becomes like a templatized version that they can always play around with. 
uh, but Love it. that's about it. Nowadays, with, okay. with Chat GPT, you can simply put a prompt and get information as well. Okay, we're going to talk about that later. This is great stuff. Okay, keep going. This is great. Great. So now, for me, the next step, people I meet is going to be the header. I will simply, what I'll do is I'll just uh, quickly add uh, some nice pictures to make the app look interesting. I have saved it somewhere else. But yeah, I need the app to look at least a little interesting. So what I'm going to do is now populate the screen with some elements. Now, this particular screen in the center is currently blank because on the left side, there are no components. First thing what I'll do is I'll add a new component. What I want is I want a simple picture over here, which talks more about the app. So I'll just upload a picture here. I'll To upload a picture, what I do is I, I click here to add a new component. And as the name suggests, it's going to be an image component. But when you click on a new component, you have various different components over here. You go here and just select the component you want. I selected the, the image and this image is going to be a static image. So I'm simply going to, uh, as soon as I add a component on the right side, I get the settings to, to, to configure the image. And here I just go here and select an image by from a URL because I already have the URL of the image and I, I put it over here. So my app is called Networking Ninja. I made a small subtle graphic to show uh, what the app does. And the tagline is make every connection count. This is basically an image I made on Canva. Put it over here. That's it. The next thing that I want to do is my step one. So I will simply elaborate what I want to do over here in words because it's extremely important to type out instructions for the end user. Even if it's me, I really want the words to be typed out over here. So what I'll do is I'll just simply add a text component uh make it center aligned to just follow the context and simply copy the text from here and go back and paste it step one meet somebody so whenever i open my app i i know okay step one i'm supposed to go and meet somebody after that i want to add the next step so meet somebody doesn't have anything to do with the app okay perfect so do nothing but simply add another step so what I did over here was Glide offers this beautifully. You can simply duplicate a component that you have built. So I'll duplicate the previous step and just change the, the uh, text over here. Okay, I'll copy this and I'll go back and I'll paste this. Now st step two says capture business card details. In this step, I need to actually take a picture and upload it over here. And that is something where the app will come in play. In order for me to upload a picture over here, I need to have a place where I can upload. So I need to have a place where I can insert an image or capture an image. And for that, I'll add a new component. So here, I'll go here and I'll search for a new component, which makes sense. If I scroll, um, perfect. I find a component which says image picker. That is exactly what I want. I added an image picker. Now, a point to be noted over here. When I add an image picker, I want to store this business card every time a new person, every time I meet a new person. And hence, this business card is going to be a temporary one. It becomes permanent only when I save it. So that's the reason I added two, two different columns on the back end, which is temporary business card and a normal business card. So for now, what I will do is I'll use this column, the temporary business card, to save this particular information. So as soon as I've added an image picker, I decide I have the option to decide which column I want to link it to. And I'll simply select the temporary business card as the link and the label, I'll just change the label to upload business card or, or actually take a picture because take a picture of the business card. Perfect. Over here, I have another option to decide if I want to use camera and photo roll or camera only. For now, we'll keep it flexible. Let them upload from both the sides. Okay, they've uploaded the, uh, the business card. Now we move to the next step, which is step three. Uh, so step three is actually going to be, again, we do the same thing. We copy what we want as step three, come back on the app and paste it here. 
step three capture voice now in order to capture my voice i need a place to store the voice and i also need a component to capture the voice so similarly i'll just go here i'll search for something that can that is able to capture voice um let's see what we have here yes we have something called as audio recorder it's i added the audio recorder and i need to save it in some particular place and for that i have created a temporary voice recording as well i go there and i save it there now the title is going to be we can change the title uh, just speak about your meeting and next steps it's like clear instructions that are that have been given here and all i need to do is click on record and it does the job and finally we add step 4 which is going to be send messages okay the full send messages for now this might not make sense but here is the workflow that the the user needs to do they need to meet somebody capture a business card capture voice and send messages but there is something missing in the middle right like what doc yeah. you are going to ask me is what happens after i capture a business card what happens after i speak to the to the to the app what i need to do is capture details from the business card i also need to capture voice notes from the business card for the meeting meeting notes of sorts correct yes and yeah keep going that's exactly what i was going to ask perfect so for now what i have done is i have just created a small simple business card uh from canva which is a which is a dummy one so that we'll see when we upload this what happens uh for me now for now i'll just download this one okay it's it says everything corporate we'll just change the company name to buildcon love it company to buildcon and we'll have the designation as employee he has a name he has a phone number he has an email uh let's just print and keep it as a picture uh here i'm using canva uh, i won't dive deeper over here but it's it's basically a a tool to create pictures and yeah graphic design basically okay i've downloaded this picture what i will do is i will go go ahead and take a picture of that particular card so as soon as i do this i have an ability to upload this i simply upload the the business card it's uploading the information while we are doing that i'll also record the conversation so i'll simply go here and hit record so i met doc today and it was uh, a great meeting uh, doc is interested in the work that i do and uh, for me the next steps are to uh, send my deck to doc yes i recorded this voice and saved it on my app now ideally when i'm doing this i want the app to automatically populate everything that i have on the back end so right now it's just saving we'll wait okay my my audio note has been saved both my picture and my audio has been saved but what i want to happen from this is from the business card i want to populate 1 2 3 4 5 columns and from the 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 voice recording i want to populate the meeting notes now in order to do that we are going to use some ai doc are you ready for that I'm ready for it. Wait, okay, before you do it. I'm sorry. Sure. Because uh, this is just so much good stuff right here. Could yeah. you explain so when you're doing the layout, I don't have to run my app to 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 do what you just did. I can just go to the layout and just do it as like a a dummy test pretty much. That's Absolutely. That's so fun and cool. Glide okay. offers is is an interface where the where you as a developer can work as as a user. So you can simply view as different users in your app. and you will see exactly what your end user will see so you you will be able to use the app as anybody else would be able to use it all right awesome this is great okay so we got all this we see the basics of adding this all right we're ready to see what ai can do this is awesome man so we have captured information now now we are supposed to extract information and then save it okay so let's move to extraction great so now this is where glide ai comes in it's it's the most powerful part in order to extract information from my business card 
I'm going to add a new column. Now, extract business card info. That's what I'm going to name the column. Doc, can you guess what what would if you had to name a column which is going to extract something from image, like extract text from image, what would you name the column? Uh, <laughs> extract Let's or guess. something <laughs> something like oh. that. Or yeah, take so, something from it. What what would you thinking? As easy as or text image from text. image, something like that. Yeah, text yeah, yeah. Image. Perfect. Let's 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 search for text. Text. Okay, there are lots, but there's an AI column which says image to text. Is that self-explanatory? Mm. Love it, love it. That makes so much perfect. sense. Yeah, image to text we, makes perfect sense. We extra we use that, uh, and then it just simply asks me. Where, where exactly is my image located at? So I simply have to go and select the column where my image lives at the moment. And my image lives in the temporary business card. Mm. And then what is the method? What do I want it to do? I want to extract. Do I want to describe the image? Do I want to extract the text? I actually want to extract the text. I don't want to do it as a JSON. It's too complex for me. I just want to extract the text. That's it. So I'll simply click on extract text. And I'll save. As soon as I did that, if you see, it automatically brought everything from you from from the image. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So wow! This is we are talking about an OCR and Google Vision, etc. We don't need to worry about any of those things. This is in house. This is a feature inside Glide itself. But we still can't do much about this because it's all the information cluttered together. I want information one at a time. So what I will do is I will use some AI on top of this. Now in order for you to extract the specific name from this place, uh, from this particular information, we'll need some more AI. So what we'll do is we'll add another column, extract name. Here I just want to extract the name. Uh, over here again I'll use the AI to simply uh, convert my text or maybe yeah, generate text instructions please help me find the exact name of the person this is basically a prompt that you need to play around with and you need to give an input so for this we'll give the input of the extraction that we have put okay we might have to play around with the prompt uh, with the instructions to get the exa exact output what is the name? But I want it in just two words. Uh, so I'll add some prompt over here. Please do not elaborate. Please um, answer specifically with the name only. Perfect. Now with some kind of prompt engineering, you will be able to get the, the desired output that you need. So when I did this, and one thing to note, while I'm doing the prompts, the output, I can see the output come up over here. So basically you can, you can iterate and you can see the output. As soon as I hit save, what it's doing here is the business card info has so many things, but my extract name just has Kylie, just has the name. Similarly, what I will do is I'll, I'll duplicate the column. Uh, like I, I want to extract the email, for example, for now, we'll just do name and email to keep, uh, keep a check on the time. So I'll just simply duplicate this. I'll re uh, rename it to extract email and I will replace things over there. What is the, the email? Please answer specifically with the email only. And I hit done and I see this column. Okay. It's still not answering correctly. Please answer. Please. As you're doing this too, if you don't mind, Manan, um, as he's doing this, this is really important and we're showing you this live because you see you're going to need to make iteration when you're using AI. You're going to have to keep going back and seeing what's going on from there. But it's important, like Manan's been showing you, there's a plan and he's doing a logical development as he's going through this. 
So if it's not putting the right uh, output, he's thinking about the prompt. Should he rephrase it? What's going on? And we just saw this was softer too. When, when you're using different systems and using AI, sometimes the phrasing, just a little bit, the nuances will really allow you to produce the right answer. So this is great that we're seeing Manan as he's going through this process. Let's let's keep it simple for now. The email address is hello. So it's extracting the email for me. Now, while this is happening, one more thing that we need to extract is the, the details from the voice. So we'll add one more column. The way we did image from text, we'll now do audio from text. Extract meeting notes. AI, audio to text, perfect. Does the job for me, temporary voice recording. I hit save and the magic is I can see the information here. Perfect. Now I've populated the back end with all this information. What I'll do is I'll now go back to the front end. Ideally, as soon as I upload a picture, I want to be seeing the information populate live. So what I'll do is I'll simply add some more fields over here. I'll take, I'll speed it up a little, but basically I'm going to add a new component called the fields and save it right below the image. And in this fields, I'm going to show the extracted information. So extract name and extract email. We'll just rename these. And here we go. As soon as we upload a picture uh, for the end user, as from, from a UI perspective, I want to see the name and the email populate right away. So as soon as I upload a picture, the name and email should auto populate. Uh, as soon as I upload the, uh, capture the voice, the, the data from the voice note should populate right away. So I'm simply adding those fields over here and then I'm adding a button below. So now that we have uploaded the picture, uploaded the voice, we have captured all the information on the back end. It's populating in the right way. What I need to do next is because all this information is temporary. I want to simply add it and make it permanent. Does that make sense? Basically create a new record. Yes. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll add a new button on the glide a button is where we, we actually create new actions in on this button. What we'll do is save information and send email. This is what the button, this is what the button is going to do. Okay. Now over here on this button, what I need to actually do is capture all this information, capture the name, capture the email, capture the meeting notes and upload it in the right columns. So basically add a new row. After adding a new row, I also want to send an email to the end user. So that's what we are going to do now. On this button, a button is basically an action. So when I added this button, I can go around and play with the look of the button. I'm keeping it basic for now. And I will go here and create a new action for the button. So on the right, when you see the action, I can simply click here. And because this button needs to do two things, one thing, save information, which is adding a new row. And second is send an email. So automatically create like a preset email. What I will do is instead over here, I'll just go here and say, I want to create create a new action. So here I'll just simply search and create a new action. Here, firstly, when I created a new action, I, there's a new screen that opened up. This is the, this is something I mentioned in the beginning. This is the action interface. This is where you can create some logical workflows. You can tell the app when I click something, basically when a user interacts with this button, do certain things. And here I will define the certain things that I want to do. So first I will name this action save details and here I will go and decide the things I want to do. So the first thing that I want to do is actually add a new row, add a new row and save the information that I have captured in the temporary fields. So here I'm going to go here and click on find a column which says add row in add row. I'm going to go in the table which says people I meet and in the name field, I'm going to store the information of the extracted name. In the phone number for now, we don't have it. So re replace that. But basically I'm going to link the right columns in the right places in the email field, extracted email, 
uh, we have not extracted a company or the designation, which is what we can do as well. In the business card, here I'm going to add the temporary business card because you had saved the temporary one. So simply add the temporary business card. In the meeting notes, extracted meeting notes. And these two, I'm actually going to go here and save nothing because I don't need to add anything. So basically, what I did over here was all the temporary information that was stored, I'm actually adding it as a new row and saving it in the database. So that's one thing. Alongside that, I want to do something like send an email. I want to send an email to the extracted email with a subject which says, hi, it was great meeting you. And the body will simply have the extracted notes. So everything that you spoke will automatically be captured and sent in the email. So we have, uh, in fact, instead of sending an email, we'll just simply compose an email. Uh, compose is actually, sending will automatically send it. For now, we'll keep it to composition so that you can edit the email later. Compose an email, send it to the extracted email with a subject. Hi, it was great to meet you. And the body with the extracted notes, simply. And finally, we'll add another column, another action which, which gives feedback to the user that record has been added. So it's going to be a notification. We'll show a notification which says, uh, new prospect added. We are done with this and we press done. And as soon as this is done, Let's wait a moment. Cool. All looks fine to me. I think one of the fields is broken, break up, breaking down. Okay, I'm going to do, do some you, quick troubleshooting. No worries. How did you know that it was broken? How, what what so did you see? The button is actually error? grayed out. Yeah, the button is grayed oh, out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not letting me do some things, uh, and hence I will probably have to just troubleshoot. No worries, uh, Manan. As you're doing that, can I answer some questions real quick? For sure. Screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, this was a question from the audience. They were mentioning this might be, seems like a stupid question, yes. but when selling an app to a business, for example, on Flutter's Flow, would you be giving them the Flutter code specifically, or the app download you would, uh, you would for a customer? That's a great question. Um, this can, can, I'll answer the question for Flutterflow and then we'll talk about depending on what platform you use, right? So if you're doing it from Flutterflow, there's a couple different ways you're doing it. Are you building the application for them and you're setting up an account? For example, are you actually going to create a Flutterflow account for them, give them access, uh, and then be able for them to gain access to the entire products, a project that it, it encompasses? Are you going to make it as a template? Then you create it in their account and then you run it and then they can do it. So it kind of depends on what's going on with the relationship. What does it say for your contract? What would you like? Or are you going to create it as a template, simply allow them to uh, import it into their account and then they can run it from it there. They can. They have to maintain the app, all of those things. So it depends on what you're gonna be doing with the client. Is it gonna be a one and done? Or are you gonna maintain the app? Um, and you're going to set those priorities or you're going to be able to set that structure of the business based on what you would like to do. Um, every There's pros and cons to a lot of different ways. Um, we'll have some Flutterflow experts and we can talk about how they do it as an agency as well. Uh, but for us, usually we're building it in our account or allowing them to see access to it. And then we create a new account and then we're onboarding them and the staff and that's their account that's their baby and then from the team account then we'll have access to it and everything like that but we want them to have full access to it because they'll have it in flutter flow then they can they'll have access to the code right they'll be able to see all the flutter code and do whatever they want they if they don't want to pay flutter flow anymore and they want to just export it and they don't want to deal with flutter flow anymore that's an aspect that they could do as well so um, let me know if that makes sense. If you, you know, and also depends, you know, again, contracts, what you decide, but I want them to have as much independence as possible. 
I don't want them to have like I don't want to hold it hostage or for ransom. I just don't think it's great and it's too complicated. I'm, I get tired. I just don't want to deal with clients like that. So I want them to have as much independence as possible. If something goes wrong or if I want them to have the team take over it, we can make a clear split. Um, and the rest I, I keep in the, you know, in the contract disputes and everything like that. Um, you know, Manana, you're doing this too. Um, yeah, good to go, Doc. And the problem yeah. is solved. Um, oh, oh, problem uh, problem solved. Okay, yeah, let's talk about it. Do people charge for personal help? Um, yeah, I charge people all the time. I charge people for, <laughs> for coaching and for our community. And uh, Manan, oh, keep going. I'm sorry. Uh, Manan, do you want to share your screen again? I apologize. Sure, yeah. Let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Uh, the answer is yes. So there's a link down below. Uh, if people want help, I offer coaching. Manan, I, I'm pretty sure you do the same exact thing. Um, yes. and you, and you run your agency, but, um, yeah, people charge all the time. <laughs> you got to charge for your time. Um, and then if you're scaling, it's one to many. So I, you know, group coaching that way you don't get, um, you know, really, uh, burned out of, because you're one person, especially if a lot of people want your time, I do group coaching or, you know, we have a productized community too. So I'll let you keep going with, uh, with the app as well. Great questions. Sorry about that, Manan. Uh, we we see the picture. We okay. see you, no uh, but we can't hear you. Okay, now we got you. Now we got you. Great. So while you were you were discussing about those things, I just went ahead and troubleshoot, uh, like did some troubleshooting and solved the problem. And I'll just tell you what what I added. So we had one action which was supposed to add a new row uh, with the temporary data and store it. Second action to compose an email. Third action to show a notification. And I added one more action to, to clear the values of the temporary cards. Because as soon as I add a new prospect and I save them, I want to clear the temporary ones so that I can add new ones. Make sense? Makes sense. Makes sense. Perfect. Let's try it out. So now everything is done. We have uploaded a picture, uploaded a voice note. The voice note output is thank you for now because I uploaded a new one and I hit save. As soon as I hit save, my email, do you see my email pop up? My mail account? I see. Yes, I see. Yep, a blue screen. Okay, now I see it. It automatically populates the two and the high uh, and everything. So it automatically composes an email for me. It automatically saves the information of Kairi uh, Petrakis, saves it for me. And now I can add a new prospect and I can add a new recording. So now basically I created a simple CRM for myself and it's good to go. Let's try another. Let's try. One more, and maybe if all works, I think we did something well. So let's just name Sounds it. Sounds great. And that's it. Yeah. I named a dog. I'm going to save this image. Just the first page. Download. Go back on the app. I met Doc. Second, I, I upload a picture with Doc or I upload a picture of Doc's business card. As soon as I upload the picture of Doc's business card, the app does its job and it should ideally populate your name and it should populate, populate the email. Okay. For some reason, this is not working, but maybe we'll, we'll make it work. I'll speak about the meeting quickly. It was great meeting you, Doc, and I would love to do more work with you like this. Thank you. I spoke about this uh, and I'm going to save this. Uh, perfect. It automatically populated all of those things. And here I'm going to save the information. It got saved. It opened my email app. It composed an email for me. I will just simply show you guys. So all the information that I wanted to compose came here. Ideally, the email should also come, but for some reason it's not coming. We, we need to do some better prompt engineering there. And it also saved doc for me over here. So. Yeah, Doc, I think I'm three or four minutes over time, but we are ready with the app. Last thing, I what I'll do it. is I'll publish the app and click publish and the link is active. And I can now use it tomorrow for the next event I'm going to go. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, Manan, <laughs> do you have to run real quick? Or you? Uh, <laughs> or can I ask you questions? <laughs> you can ask me questions. I'm, but okay. I hope my presentation I... was, 
was on point. Oh, it's good. It was perfect. It was perfect. First of all, thank you very much. That was great. People are loving this. Um, th- first of all, no, that was great. You did this. I have the timer right here. You did this in 47 minutes and 15 seconds. Um, that's wow. pretty great. <laughs> Building out a whole app from scratch and then bringing in AI and then troubleshooting. And I was asking you questions through it. So that I know you could have done it quicker, but you were taking the time answering questions. So that was great. That was great. Um, this is really good. This is really good. Let us know in the chat what you think about this. If this is the first time you've seen Glide. Some people, uh, this was the first time they've ever seen Glide when you were doing this. Uh, so that mm-hmm. was really, wow. really good. Um, the, the one question I would have is, you were talking about, for you, for me, I'll just say this. When I first learned Glide from you, uh, because I was familiar with it before, but when, when I learned it from you and, and, and Tom, it, it, it just felt overwhelming. So yeah. I, I would say too, when people are listening, keep it simple. If you feel overwhelmed, don't try to just power through it. Think about what you need to do. Take a break, understand the concept and then add on. Um, I, I also like what you mentioned talking about with AI, um, that still needs to have a logical development of how you debugged what was going on. So that's something that I, I think is really important that you have the skills and you've had the experience of thinking through it. How did you learn? Was it just trial and error? Because you took time to, to debug it. What? How did you get to that point? Because it, it happened over time. Could you explain that for a little bit? It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of experience that comes in over here. So... The more you build, the more you learn, the more you know how to put the right prompt in the right place. That's it. I mean, there is a lot of theory that you can read, but only when you apply it, that's when you'll you'll be able to uh, do the best job. So, yeah. Learn while you build. Yeah, Very good. Very good. So, no, this was great. I got a couple of questions for you. By the way, Ty saying they misses the boot camp classes. We miss you too, man. That was great times. All those things. We got OG students from uh, Apps Without Code in this piece. So this is good. Um, So this is really good. So I want to go through just a couple of things. Number one, there's going to be a link down in the chat for anyone that wants to uh, hire Manan or his team or want to do anything like that. Um, We're going to do the link to the website so you can uh, talk to him. Manon's the best when it comes to Glide and just anything dealing with creating applications for your business, all those things, wealth of information, go sign up, go talk to Manon and connect with him on uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. So we'll put all those things. Um, Manon, real quick, people are asking, what if they had questions about, is there a community for Glide specialists only? Say for instance, they want a paid community or free community, different than just having the community message board from uh, Glide, do you run your own community? Do you do a paid service? Tell me a little bit about that. I don't run a community as such at the moment. Uh, there are multiple Glide communities out of Slack and Glide itself has a, a has an expert community. So as soon as you become like uh, level one certified, you can join the, the Glide expert community of sorts. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I'm available for uh, paid consulting if you need help with like one-on-one sessions or one-on-one tutoring beginning from there to like complete app builds. Like my agency does all kinds of builds. Uh, there are, if you check the website, you'll see the case studies, etc. But yeah, that's, that's it. Love it. Um, by the way, we already have Manan's part of our docs connections, of course. So you can take advantage of that. If you do book with Manan, make sure that you tell him where you came from. Let him know that you were watching from BuildCon and all that stuff. Um, again, we just appreciate the time of all the things that you're doing. We love to see it. Um, and also too, just so, uh, some people are asking shameless plug. We have a community, but listen, we do a low barrier community. Ours is the help desk. Uh, it's docs help desk. So you can see what it has. What we do is it's a paid, uh, help desk. You can ask questions. I do videos, so I do everything async. And then if you want one-on-one calls with me, let me know. The reason, and it's all built in Notion, the reason behind it is we have tried tons of communities. I love Heartbeat. I've loved tons of these platforms, but they were just a little bit too heavy for us, what we need. Most people just have questions. And so it's powered by AI (laughs) that we, we have the AI chatbot 
uh, that you can ask questions if I'm not online. Um, so you can talk to to all of all of the things that have my resources. And then again, you can see past episodes that we're going to be adding. But you can ask me right here. It's uh, and we just use OpenAI and built it and put it all together from uh, from uh, from Notion. So you know, just keeping that in mind. Uh, before we go, is uh, Brand Factory? Uh, no, Brand Factory. We it's kind of just like the. Um, how can I say it's the holding company of all these other brands. So in factory, we were running the agency right now. I, I shut down the agency because I do not like working with a lot of clients. I, I want to do only consultancy. So that's why all agency work. I send it to all my friends and everyone that does great work. So I no longer have the agency. It's only a consultancy in the community and uh, in an education company. So great question. Uh, Manon, before we get you out of here, uh, let us know um, any final things, anything you want to promote, anything you want the good people to know about. Oh, Manan, we can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, hey, Doc. Thank you. Firstly, thank you so much for the presentation all together. And thanks for having me. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. We got you, man. Great. Yeah, so uh, we have been building a lot of Glide apps in the last, last three and a half, four years. I run an agency which is a Glide Premium expert at the moment. We have a big team and we build a lot of custom apps with no code and Glide, uh, no code and AI overall. Uh, and uh, it's on an enterprise scale. So if you guys are looking for anything to do with modernizing processes using no code, please hit me up uh, and we would love to you know explore a lot of uh, various different ideas. We have great case studies. So check out my LinkedIn and you'll be that's the best place uh, for you to connect with me, my LinkedIn. You'll see some good uh, case studies out there. And yeah, I'm happy to always answer questions. Anything that comes through Doc, happy to discuss, happy to take it forward. Love it, love it, love it. Well, again, Fanon, thank you so much for your time. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to drop his link for his LinkedIn to connect with Manon in just a minute. Remember, check out his agency. Go support Manon. He's awesome. And uh, again, thank you so much for the time, man. We'll catch up soon. And thank you, man, I just Bye. appreciate yeah. you being here, man. See you, see you, see you, yeah, see you. Thanks. See you, see you. Bye.